five, four, three, two, one. Welcome again to this edition, which we shall call a letter of introduction upon behalf of the Red Neck Mystic Lawyer Podcast. It is the Red Neck Mystic who will be giving us his bona fides and stating his manifesto. I give you, <laughs> good sir, the redneck mystic Sloan Bashinsky before you in the SEC shirt. Well, manifesto. That sounds like something Don Quixote would call for. And uh, Sancho Panza would wonder, why? Why are we chasing these windmills again? And the fact is, something's chasing me, Sancho. Well, the same thing's I, just I, further I, behind me. <laughs> and if I don't chase those windmills, that's something bites my ass, among other things. So that's the manifesto <laughs> and the explanation. Now, the letter of introduction is actually something I wrote for people that prefer to read instead of watch me shoot off my mouth. And in it, I explain a little bit about myself chronologically, basically around books I've written, all of which uh, I have put on their own blogs or parts of the different books on their own blog. So the whole total is all there. There are links that are provided uh, in the description or below the description of this particular little shorter podcast for people where they can open those links and read for free at their leisure or not read. It's up to them. I'm not charging any money. I'm not twisting any arms. And I can tell you that the things I write about they actually happened as far as I know, especially the things that I personally was involved in. I can't prove it. A lot of it, of course. And even the stuff that happened that was human, there might be some records elsewhere of it. The stuff that was metaphysical, I guess the records are in the Akashic record or in some library in heaven. Uh, and they're also recorded in books I wrote, uh, blogs I wrote for years and in these podcasts. So that's about all I wanted to to say tonight. I understand you're going to put this somehow, tag it somehow to the podcast as a letter of introduction of the Redneck Mystic Lawyer. And if people can read it or not, like we're not running any ads? I think face. I, I think YouTube puts an ad on. We have to go put up with that. We're not soliciting money. We're not trying to get you to buy anybody else's products. Uh, we haven't endorsed anybody else's products, except perhaps you know, like Jesus's or something like that. But uh, as we understand Jesus, not as uh, some people say they understand Jesus, and. With that, I think, I don't know, you may wish to chime in, Sancho. Sancho had a negative experience today with another streaming site, and he is grumpy with them. Shall I expound? Well, if you want to do a little bit, leave out some of the, leave, leave tell them it. what it was Tell, tell them what it was like for you to try to put the previous podcast we did on YouTube onto Rumble. When I tried to get onto Rumble, one of the key locking points was that they wanted to verify that I was a human being. And even with a name like Redneck Mystic, which obviously to me wouldn't be computer generated. They kept sending me 
through these quote-unquote captions that were asking me, almost like solving puzzles, to pick out things like uh, buses in pictures or so forth. That wasn't working. Contacted support through them. Got eventually a human being who contacted me and that human being made a remark about uh, his choice of presidential candidate, who he was supporting, which was weird. And then I was able to upload. It cost me three hours of time to upload a video that only takes one hour to upload to YouTube. And I don't give away any rights in perpetuity to YouTube. And I can terminate things on YouTube. Whereas on Rumble, if you actually look at the fine print, you're giving up things in perpetuity. I don't like and signing Faustian deals. That's how you do it. Did the guy tell you something about the Talladega Raceway? The guy said something to the effect of you know what let's go Brandon means man I, after he had said oh ha, 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 redneck this podcast ha, ha, ha. I said yeah I, I know what that means and you tell the audience what it means in case they haven't heard it audience I severely doubt you don't know what let's go Brandon means but it was a nasty thing that happened at Talladega Gaga Motor Speedway in which a young man named Brandon won his first NASCAR race and a bunch of VA who's who were in the stands near the reporter proceeded to yell, fuck Joe Biden, as though it were a sports chant. And as a result, the lady said, yes, can't you hear all the people out there, Brandon? They're saying, let's go, Brandon, when you could hear on national public television, fuck Joe Biden, which didn't make Republicans or conservatives look very good. Did he also inquire about your relationship with Jesus? Now that, I do not recall. Did you tell him something? Or was there any conversation about Jesus? Well, okay. you are, excuse me, you are correct. Because he wanted to know about this mystic, redneck mystic, uh, what you doing? And I said, yes, uh, it could be considered a Christian podcast. Well, it's good for a person to have personal relationship to Jesus. I said, yeah, I think it would be good if all people had a personal relationship with Jesus. I'm just not sure everyone does. Well, I can tell you my experiences with Jesus and with Archangel Michael and Melchizedek and... The Holy Spirit. That's and, not what they're about, is it? Well, well, I can just say they don't seem to be much like what they are describing they represent when they talk about those entities. In fact, I think if uh, I would be venture to say that most Christians, uh, if they had the experiences I have had, with what they think is holy or convinced is holy and are convinced is saving. They might not want to have anything to do with it. I don't know. Maybe they would. Maybe they would wake up or see things differently. But I think it would be rather a different experience from what I have happening and what they, they claim they represent. And, and you've told me enough stories yourself about your experiences with angels whose names appear in the Bible. Uh, 
to let me know I'm not the only person around who's having experiences that are very different from the people I know who are Christians say they are having. And I've known some other people in the same boat in the past, but right now, you're the only one I know. You haven't been at it as long as I have, but they are bringing you along really fast. And I can tell from your dreams that you report or from the experiences you're having. And yeah, we're mystics. And that means you're in direct communion with the other realms. And some of those other realms are, have to do with God and some of them do not. And it can get very tricky out there. And anyway, I talk a good bit about that and what I write and sometimes in what I say. And perhaps this is a good place to adjourn. And, and um, I would like to uh, state one final thing. Rumble support, if they call you, it is a quote unquote private number. But if you know how to unravel private numbers, it goes to 941, which is Sarasota, Florida. And that private number is indeed, if you look it up, it goes back to Rumble, whose corporate headquarters is Sarasota, Florida. And they were per previously, excuse me, in Long Longboat Key, Florida. I rest my case. I mean, I'm not quite sure what you're trying to say about those parts of Florida. I thought I, Rumble was a I thought Rumble was a Canadian company. Rumble's corporate headquarters are actually in Sarasota, Florida. And so I'm just saying that is where I ended up getting that uh, link to try to begin a Rumble channel. All right. And also, you have, what, fiber high-speed internet? I have a fiber connection. Yeah, and it took you one hour to post the podcast on YouTube, and it took over three hours to, to upload it to Rumble. And only after it was uploaded did they let us know that they were requiring an assignment one of four different kinds of licensing agreements in which we would give up in different ways rights and that and one of them we could continue to post at YouTube but not anywhere else but because Rumble has ownership interest in any of those license agreements they could they could they could d demand anything that I put in the future on YouTube I take down that is correct. So what is, I'm a lawyer, you're not, but I think you're probably right. They can object, they can make things difficult. So basically, uh, they they would own me or part of me if I if I sign the license to go with them and, and you work three times as much and I'm paying you by the hour just to get it on their platform. And we don't know what's gonna happen. And I've been looking at Rumble myself and it is very it seems very uh, heavy weighted to the right, and we would be waiting into a place where we probably wouldn't be well received. I'm used to not being well received. I'm used to catching a lot of flack. And, but uh, I don't know. It's, I don't know if it'd be worth the, uh, the time and effort or the risk. And so I'm mostly, because we, we, they didn't even give us a chance to, to sleep on their offer. You had to, you had so much time, are they going to take down the three hours of uploading you did? So we've lost that time. And if we decided we want to try to work with Rumble, we got to go through tomorrow everything we went through tonight. Is that right? That is correct. Because if you try to, after, if you do not make a choice within their allotted amount of time, tells you that the page is expired and it says uh, agree to a term or essentially exit. If you exit, you have to go through this all again. Yeah.
it was a lot to read. I don't have it yet, but I would need to see it before I even begin to agree to it. But what could happen is I can go on to a, a, a very leaning, hard leaning right uh, platform and they decide that what I'm publishing is dangerous to their position and they could tie me up and lock me down and I couldn't publish online. And I don't think what's pushing me to poke at windmills would care much for that outcome. In fact, I, I would hate to think what might happen, what, what kind of hammering they would do on me if I, if I went that way and that's how it ended up. And so I'm just trying to find a place to express my thoughts. And, you know, people can take them or leave them. They can cuss me out. I get cussed out plenty. You ought to see what happens on Facebook when I boost a post there. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, the likes all. Oh, you'd think the likes. most people had to take Benadryl. Well, the, the likes and the, and the laughs all, will always greatly exceed the... Uh, the uh, negativity. The, the negativity. But they, you know, greatly exceed. But these people that feel imposed on because a boosted post ended up in their in their Facebook account. I mean, they get so they get so mad sometimes. It's like you know, I have I've blown up their house or something. Like you know, they don't understand. First, That's what Facebook, allows Facebook to exist. Right. I said. I tell them. I said, look, Facebook has to get paid so you can have your free Facebook account. Hello. And you know that's how they how they stay in business and make a lot of money too, and and so they do it by taking you know they have all these arrangements with all these companies. They're sharing information. They're giving a I don't know what all they're doing to make money, but one way they make money is they invite someone like me who puts up a post on a page to pay them money to boost it, and so uh, it's a cheap way to to reach a lot of people. Uh, in the United States, for example, and and Facebook's algorithm, I guess, or computer selects who's going to receive it. I have nothing to do with picking who's going to receive it. I have no idea who might receive it, but they always blame me, and they know what's going on, and I remind them of it, but they don't blame Facebook. They blame me. I told some guy yesterday that was crying about it, I said, well, you know, here's another way you can look at it. In, in God's kingdom, the odds are always 100%. So you were picked out to receive it. And he sent me an uh, image of, of a bird being shot at me. And I wrote back, I love that sign. I use it all the time. I used it just the other day when somebody asked me what I thought of the 45th president. And I shot a bird. And the guy said, 45 is full of shit. And I said, you just insulted shit. And then I told him, you have to know, I felt almost the same about Hillary Clinton and I didn't like Barack Obama either. So there you have it. Agreed. Yes, sir. Mystics aren't allowed to jump on wagons that are seen to be plunging into hell one way or another. Uh, we we may we may run with them a little while, but we don't become one of them. We can't. Our allegiance always is not to a political party, not to a church, but to God. And God trumps. Everything. Everything. And not political, not political doctrine, not religious doctrine, not beliefs, not hopes, not dreams, plans. God not fears trumps everything. everything. Thing. And that is the point I keep trying to make. And of course, that's 
say exactly what Jesus told people in the Gospels. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Pray the Lord's Prayer, you know, doing God's will. Always, what is God's will? And it's hard to discern sometimes, and you have to be shown it. If you go down the wrong rabbit hole, you might be reminded someday going down the wrong rabbit hole, or you might be reminded right quick. And anyway, that's a mystic. And we are no longer of this world. We have to live in it. But we dance to a different drumbeat from the drumbeat we used to dance to. We used to be like everybody else, more or less. But we're not anymore. And that is, that is a good difficult, point? yes, because someday else we can discuss the difference between being of the world versus being in the world. And I think this is a good place to stop. And my blood well, pressure. We're, we're, we were both very much of the world. And Agreed. then we got then we got taken on some trips and through some experiences. And so now we're in the world, but we're answering to something not of the world. That's basically what it means. Our, our gods are no longer things of this world. Agreed. We have to deal with them. And maybe we wish things would happen here or there, but it's God's will, not our will, be done. That was what Jesus thought. That was the way he lived. God's will, not his will, be done. That is the, that is the way of the mystic, uh, as I understand it. Of course, different people have different views. Well, that's what I came to. And Jesus was a good uh, teaching model for me. Good night, Bob. Good night, sir. And we adjourn. <laughs>